بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله Today we will start with Surah Al-Tariq Surah Al-Tariq is a Meccan Surah by consensus uh, The name of the Surah is Al-Tariq according to the majority of the uh, Tafasir uh, it was revealed after Surah Al-Balad and before Surah Al-Qamar. The reason for revelation, as uh, stated by Imam Al-Aini uh, from the narration of Ibn Abbas, uh, عنه, he said the Prophet وسلم, was sitting one day with Abu Talib and uh, he was eating with the Prophet when suddenly a star dropped uh, and as a result the horizon was filled with uh, the light of that star so abu talib became scared and he asked the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam what was that meaning what happened uh, so the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said it is a star that was thrown down uh, and it is one of the signs of Allah, the Almighty. Uh, so uh, at that, Abu Talib was uh, amazed at the uh, event. And it was then when Allah Azza wa revealed as per Ibn Abbas, uh, it's, it was then that Allah revealed was Sama'i wa Tariq. Going into the tafsir of the surah, Allah Azza wa starts off the surah with an oath, he swears by some of the creation, great creation of his subhanahu wa ta'ala, saying, وَالسَّمَاءِ وَالطَّارِقِ So it's an oath here by two things, by السَّمَاء and by الطَّارِق. السَّمَاء is any structure that's above us, includes the heavens, the galaxies, everything that's above us, the angels, everything that's above us according to the scholars of tafsir, uh, is included in the term or in the word uh, sama. Sama differs from samawat. Samawat, when it's used in the Quran, it usually refers to the seven heavens, right? But sama is is a more uh, comprehensive. It's much uh, larger than the term samawat in terms of what it includes and encompasses in it, unless it is defined by dunya then it's referring to the first heaven or the first sky. Otherwise, as-sama is anything above us is called uh, sama. So Allah Azza wa Jal is uh, swearing by as-sama. And we gave some details in Surah Al-Buruj, this is the surah before that, and what is contained in uh, the term or in as-sama. Uh, and then the other oath is wat was Sama'i by the sky and by At-Tariq. At-Tariq is uh, translated as the night comer. At-Tariq in Arabic comes from Taraqa, knocking, right? And uh, this is usually uh, used in the Arabic language to refer to anyone who comes to visit you at night unexpectedly. He knocks at your door unexpectedly, and it usually happens at night because the Arabs used to travel at night. And as a matter of fact, it's sunnah to travel at night because the Prophet ﷺ said, the, the, the earth, when you travel uh, at night, uh, the distance becomes shortened. Now, the scholars disputed whether it literally is shortened by Allah Azza wa Jal or it is something to, uh, to say that it's metaphoric, it's just to say that it's faster to reach at night uh, because the, the animals uh, travel easier, the, the climate, the weather is nicer and so But nonetheless, so Al-Tariq is someone who comes at night because when you travel at night, you reach and you, you reach late night and you knock unexpectedly at the uh, house of the destination or at your destination 
uh, unexpectedly at night. Uh, and likewise, uh, is the, the uh, or Allah Azza wa used here this uh, to swear by without explaining what a tariq here means. And then Allah Azza wa uh, goes on to say, and it's a usual uh, rhetorical question Allah Azza wa uses a lot in the Quran. وَمَا أَدَرَاكَ مَا and the scholar said the, the question وَمَا أَدْرَاكَ is usually used to magnify the status of what is being asked about. So Allah Azza wa Jal is addressing Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam saying, and what can make you, O Muhammad, know what a tariq is, this nightcomer, the comer or the visitor who knocks at night. Now, this is to to, to give the impression to one who is listening to this question that this attariq is beyond perception. It's beyond your expectation. It's something that you have no knowledge of. And your brain, it's beyond the scope of, of your brain. Uh, Sufyan rahimahullah said, Allah Azza wa Jal used in the Quran, وَمَا أَدْرَاكَ and وَمَا يُدْرِيكَ Adraka is in the past tense. He said it's used 13 times in the Quran. وَمَا يُدْرِيكَ It's used three times in the Quran. He said in all the cases when the word is used in the past tense, Allah gives the answer to the question. However, when the term is used in the present tense, no answer is given. And in this case, Allah Azza wa Jal used the past tense and therefore He gave the answer. وَمَا أَدْرَاكَ مَا الطَّارِقِ And what can make you know what a tariq is? النَّجْمُ الثَّاقِبِ The piercing star. It's the star that has a very bright light that pierces through and penetrates through the darkness of the night, traveling all this vast distance until we actually see it with naked eyes. See, you, you, you got to understand, you got to put yourself back 1400 years ago to understand the importance of some of these verses. Allah Azza wa Jal was addressing at the time people who knew nothing about any of that. The distance is in billions of years between us and some of the stars, right? Even modern science astonishes you when it tells you these pieces of information. When you see, subhanAllah, I can see this light and this is actually at that far distance from me? So Allah Azza wa is swearing by two things, by the heavens, by the uh, as sama rather, not the heavens, which is, as we said, that massive structure and all it, that it includes, and is also swearing by this piercing star, which is also part of the first creation sworn by, which is the Asama, because stars are included in that structure, the, the, uh, the structure above us. So, what is Jawab Al-Qasam? What is the answer? Allah is swearing by these to tell us something. What is that thing? What is that very important thing that Allah Azza wa Jal is paving the way for? Is preparing our hearts for? وَالسَّمَاءِ وَالطَّارِقِ وَمَا أَدْرَاكَ مَا الطَّارِقُ النَّجْمُ الثَّاقِبِ Okay Allah, what should I expect to hear now? إِن كُلُّ نَفْسٍ لَمَّا عَلَيْهَا حَافِ Allah is swearing that there is no soul but that it has over it a guard or a protector, as some of the translations uh, used. 
a guard. The, uh, the guard here is referring to the angels. What do they guard? These angels are assigned for each one of us to record every single thing that we say, that we do, that we intend. And they guard that and preserve it from being changed. Just like Allah Azza wa Jal says in Surah Qaf, مَا يَلْفِظُ مِنْ قَوْلٍ إِلَّا لَدَيْهِ رَقِيبٌ عَتِيدٌ Never that he utters a word except that he has an observer recording everything precisely and accurately without any alteration or change. Their task is to simply record everything. And this is scary. Because Allah Azza wa Jal is telling us that there is not a single second or a split of a second in your life where you're alone and not attended, when you're not monitored. In addition to Allah monitoring and overseeing and being all-knowing, all-seeing, all-hearing, Allah is also assigning these angels, these guarding angels to record in order for Him. So people would not have any excuse with Allah. He would establish evidence against them from their own records of deeds, which they will read on the Day of Judgment and confirm to, to its authenticity. Now, this, this set of verses is part of the theme of the Surah. The, the theme of the Surah, uh, of the uh, Surah Al-Tariq, is about journeys. And this is one of the, the journeys of, that Allah Azza wa Jal is, is uh, addressing. The journey of the light traveling from the heavens. Also metaphorically, Allah Azza wa Jal is talking about At-Tariq, the person who travels and comes at night and knocks. Uh, and... One thing for us believers, when we uh, read verses like this, when Allah is swearing by things that we can see, and He tells us why He is swearing by them, which is to remind us that we are being monitored and things that are, are being recorded in preparation for what? I mean, the recording has to have an objective. It's not simply just recording things for no reason, right? So what's the objective of recording? So that we will be held accountable for what we did and said, right? Us believers need to be attentive and heedful of this fact all the time. See, Quran, there's a reason Allah Azza wa Jal says, أَفَلَا يَتَدَبَّرُونَ الْقُرْآنَ Do they not reflect upon the Quran? See, Quran should be read with the intention of reflecting on it and utilizing it to prepare us on our journey to Allah Azza wa Jal and to the meaning of Allah Azza wa Jal. So next time you see a star in the heavens, in the skies, you need to think to yourself, SubhanAllah, Allah swore by this, that I am being monitored. Allah swore by this, that the angels are recording everything I do and say. Allah swore by this, that 
things are being prepared for me to meet him and then be held accountable for what is being recorded. Then Allah Azza wa starts another set of verses for those who still might have doubt from the disbelievers. After Allah Azza wa spoke to them about things that they see with their own eyes, stars that they benefit from in their journeys, right? The heavens and the skies that they see above them. If they still have doubts that they will be resurrected, if they still have doubt about the truthfulness of Muhammad sallallahu then Allah Azza wa Jal is addressing them and directing them in a different direction. فَلْيَنْظُرِ الْإِنسَانُ مِمَّا خُلِقُ So let man observe from what he was created. See, observing is not simply looking at something. When you look with observation, with the intention of observing what you're looking at, you're actually looking deep into the thing that you're looking at. Allah is telling us, don't just look, but look to observe, look to reflect. Because that observation and that reflection will lead you to the truth. Because sound-minded people from the non-believers, if they're sincere and truthful with themselves, when they look and reflect upon the creation of Allah Azza wa Jal, they will not help but submit to the fact that Allah Azza wa Jal is the creator. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. Another thing about looking at ourselves and the creation, our creation, and observing and reflecting on that. When one does that, he will surely come to the conclusion that he cannot be created for no purpose and that he will be neglected and then just die and nothing happens. It's impossible. Reflecting upon these precise creation of Allah Azza wa Jal, accurate creation of Allah Azza wa Jal, complicated creation of Allah Azza wa Jal, and the system he runs, the universe and the human being's body, it is impossible for such a wise creator, capable creator, to create all of that without a name, without a purpose. He was created from a gushing fluid ejected. Dafiq, continuously being uh, gushed out. Allah Azza wa Jal used the term insan. Man. In Arabic insan, the origin of that is because it reflects forgetfulness. Mankind forgets his origin. So Allah Azza wa Jal is reminding him who possesses this quality, who always forgets. One of the things that he forgets is his own creation and his own origin. And that he was created from this gushing fluid, which results in the formation of the sperms, which is something that is that makes a person disgusted when he finds on his clothes or right? Feels disgusted to touch it or it touching him. This is your origin, O mankind. فَلْيَنْظُرِ الْإِنسَانُ مِمَّا خُلِقُ خُلِقَ مِمَّا إِنْ دَافِقُ يَخْرُجُ مِنْ بَيْنِ الصُّلْبِ وَالتَّرَائِبُ 
the originating point, it emerges, the fluid that is, before the formation of the sperm. It emerges from between the backbone or loins, according to some translations, and the chest points, uh, bones. Now, go back 1400 years ago. This cannot be a word of a human being. This precise information cannot be something that is known by an unlearned man and conveyed to them in this precise detail. It cannot be the work of humans. It must be the work of the all-knowing creator. This was only discovered in modern science. Hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of years after the mission of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And this is in accordance to the theme we said. This is another journey. The journey of the formation of human beings, of mankind. This gushing fluid and then the formation of the sperm and then the formation of the fetus and then the creation of human being as a, an infant and so on. So Allah Azza wa Jal told us, drew our attention to the originating point of our creation to tell us that He who created you from this, who is capable from, of creating you from this, is إِنَّهُ عَلَىٰ رَجْعِهِ Indeed, He, Allah, is able to bring him back to life. So, O oh you Quraysh, who did not take a lesson, who were not sufficed by the oath of the heavens and the star, or the sama, the structure, the high structure, and by the stars, take a lesson from your own creation, and know through that, and be sure and assured that He, as He created you, can resurrect you, bring you back to life, which is something that Quraysh insisted to deny. Quraysh had a main, serious, major problem with the issue of resurrection. And they were in a state of denial regarding this issue all the time. Rejecting the idea totally. So Allah Azza wa Jal is telling them, He created you from this, so He is able to bring you back to life. After death. For what purpose? إِنَّهُ عَلَىٰ رَجْعِهِ لَقَادِرٌ He's able to bring you back to life. But for what? يَوْمَ تُبْلَ السَّرَائِرِ يَوْمَ تُبْلَ السَّرَائِرِ It is for that purpose. The day when secrets will be put out on trial, will be examined. So this, Allah Azza wa Jal in this verse, is given the justification of or the reason behind resurrection, it is to uh, expose everything that's hidden. Does every person commit all sins openly with regards to Muslims and believers? No, there are hidden ones, many ones. And actually the Prophet ﷺ told us that these are the destructive ones that can ruin you and cause you to be casted into hell. The ones that you do behind closed doors, the hidden ones. Well, Allah is saying these hidden things will be exposed. And then people will be held accountable for these hidden things. As Allah 
says, يَوْمَ إِذِنْ تُعْرَضُونَ On that day, you will be displayed. لَا تَخْفَى مِنْكُمْ خَافِيَا Nothing will be hidden from your deeds. Well, Allah says from you, meaning from everything that was produced by you. Nothing will be hidden. Everything will be exposed, examined as to its truth or the truth, and then be judged accordingly. What you say, what you do, the deeds of your body, the deeds of your heart, the deeds of your tongue, everything. And again, we need to reflect. When one sees something or hears something new about a human body, for example, nerve system, whatever, he needs to remember, say, Subhanallah, who created this? Who is reminding me with this? So I know that I will be meeting him again and meeting what I had sent forth during this life. فَمَا لَهُ مِنْ قُوَّةٍ وَلَا نَصْرٍ Then he, mankind or man, will have no power uh, or any helper or supporter. Subhanallah, when you think, when, when something befalls a person, he attempts to get himself out of that problem himself. When he fails, he usually seeks help of others to help him out, get out of that problem or hardship. Sometimes you succeed in dunya to get yourself on your own out of a problem or a difficulty. And when you don't or you can't, in many cases you can find helpful brothers or sisters who can help you in one way or another to get you out of that situation. Well, Allah Azza wa Jal is saying on that day, man will not be able to help himself and no support will avail him. As a matter of fact, no one will offer to support him. Let alone succeed in helping him. See, exposing the hidden secrets because when you do something in secrecy behind closed doors hidden from people's eyes you don't want any to, anyone to see you usually people do that because they're ashamed of being exposed in front of people right so Allah Azza wa Jal is telling everyone that on that day everything is going to be exposed whether we like it or not and we will testify to its correctness and truthfulness and testify against our own selves. But that's not all. We will not be able to help ourselves conceal that or protect ourselves from the consequence of that. And no one will be able to help in protecting us from the consequences of these hidden evil deeds that we committed, which makes the situation even harder and graver and more embarrassing and more humiliating to mankind. Let us conclude this session with this and we will continue in the following session. Subhanakallahumma alhamdik. أشهد أن لا إله إلا أنت أستغفرك